Pericardiosynthesis is a procedure performed to remove fluid that has accumulated around the heart in the pericardial sac. This fluid can accumulate from blood and trauma or from infectious, neoplastic, or inflammatory conditions. This procedure should only be performed in emergency situations if there is evidence of pericardial tamponade, evidenced by decreased filling of the heart or hemodynamic instability. This procedure can also be performed in the event of pulseless electrical activity to relieve presumed pericardial tamponade, but has decreased in frequency due to the availability of bedside ultrasound for evaluation of this condition. Notice the large volume pericardial effusion present on this ultrasound image. The heart is swaying back and forth inside of the pericardial sac, contributing to the finding of electrical alternans seen on this EKG. While preparing for this procedure, begin by providing temporizing measures to support the hemodynamics of the patient. A small fluid bolus or vasopressor medication can be used during this period. The patient should be placed supine with the head of the bed at 30 degrees to allow the effusion to move to the dependent portion of the pericardial sac nearest the planned insertion site at the subxiphoid process. Open up and inspect your pericardiosynthesis kit and ensure you have all required equipment. Pain medication or sedation with fentanyl or midazolam can be used for patient comfort prior to beginning the procedure. Next, cleanse the subxiphoid area with chlorhexidine and place a sterile drape over the anterior portion of the patient's chest. Ensure you have washed your hands and donned a cap and sterile gown and gloves. Lidocaine should be drawn up and injected into the planned track of insertion for the pericardiosynthesis needle. This track should begin one centimeter inferior to the subxiphoid space slightly left of center and directed at a 30 degree angle toward the left shoulder of the patient. Once the track has been anesthetized, attach the precordial leads, either V1 or V2, from the patient's EKG to the needle hub using a sterile alligator clip. Now, the needle can be inserted along the previously anesthetized track under negative pressure until fluid is returned. In addition to connecting the EKG lead to the needle, the monitor must be adjusted to display this lead. This lead should be monitored continuously during insertion to identify the current of injury that would indicate that the needle has penetrated the myocardium. The current of injury will be noted by exaggerated QRS complexes due to the absent resistance of the chest wall. You must withdraw the needle slightly to correct this finding if present before advancing a guide wire to ensure passage into the pericardial sac and not the right ventricle. Once the guide wire is advanced, the needle may be withdrawn and a skin nick made using an 11 blade scalpel. Volumes as small as 50 mLs acutely can lead to hemodynamic changes, while chronic effusions can grow much larger before an effect is seen. A dilator can now be passed and removed prior to threading the pigtail catheter over the wire. Once the catheter is in place, 
the guide wire may be removed and a three-way stopcock can be attached. Initial drainage of even a few mLs of fluid may improve the hemodynamics if the patient has pericardial tamponade. The stopcock can be connected to a gravity drain or assisted with manual withdrawal of fluid by using the syringe. The catheter can be secured to the skin using suture, either by tying it directly or with a Roman sandal style wrap similar to that of a chest tube. If you are unsure of the needle and catheter placement, the aspirated blood can be put into a basin. Blood that has been present in the pericardial sac should lose the ability to clot, while fresh blood from the ventricle will maintain its clotting ability. Should the catheter become clogged, it may be flushed with a small amount of heparin to try and restore flow.